us now with more House Oversight Committee. Well, more in air quotes. Let's not get too excited. Chairman James Comer is with us. Sir, how are you? I'm well. They're so good. Uh, uh, wow, well, he's, I mean, hey, give it up for Hannity, man. He's got the youth vote wrapped up. Well, I would imagine it falls under the, the purview of the House Government Reform and Oversight Committee to look into, okay, how did the cocaine get there? What about the two previous instances of drugs in the White House? And I ask you, uh, Congressman, what if... The two? If it was anthrax. What if it was fentanyl? There have been police officers, law enforcement, that have just touched uh, bags and, and contraband with fentanyl in it, ingested somehow some of that dust, and they need Narcan five minutes later. So yeah. how dangerous is that in a building where the president is? It's very dangerous. It's very disturbing. One of two things is... By the way, uh, you can tell nobody wants to get to the bottom of this story because they've got James Comer on it. At a certain point, when, when you have a dude with this many failed promises on the case, at a, I've just got to say, I think the deep state doesn't want this solved. If they've got James Comer on the case, I, I think they're trying to throw it. This, this reeks of early Clouseau happened here either number one the secret service is lying to us and they're covering for someone or number two they're incompetent because this is supposed to be the most secure dwelling in america and for the secret service to admit mm -hmm. to the world that not only yeah but the problem is the people that go through are assumed to have clearance past a certain point so the idea that you're trying to decide who actually could have had it and they're and they narrowed it to 500 people that went through can they not figure out who dropped off a white powdery substance in one of three locations in the White House that remember that story's changed three times where no it hasn't where the cocaine was actually found but also that uh, there have been two other instances where illegal drugs were found illegal drug weed apparently on the premise in the White House this is unacceptable uh, well then then stop letting Marjorie Taylor Greene bring tours through the White House And why won't she take a drug test? She will not submit to a drug test. She did not volunteer to. She said everybody else should get one. I just found that hinky. We spend a lot of money, a lot of tax dollars to make sure that we have the best secret service uh, that money can buy. But yet they can't determine who brings illegal substances into the White House. I think well, they can't create evidence where there is none. And if it's a clean baggie, and or it's got multiple fingerprints on it because there was a bunch of stuff in something and uh, multiple people had reached in to get their stuff out and it was a group of folks that all like it was in with their personal things that had fallen out of somebody's bag it got turned over and blah, blah, and nine or ten people had touched stuff that was in that bag or whatever and it was just inconclusive that in and of itself doesn't tell doesn't get you any closer to who actually had it i think that's that's very disturbing but, uh, Congressman, I'm equally as disturbed that they gave up after 10 days of investigating yep. and announced on day 11, we're done. Well, we didn't, we're not going to find the person responsible. That, to me, is the height of irresponsibility. Uh, I would like answers from the Secret Service why they gave up so quickly. Um, because they were so good, they knew that there was no conclusive evidence. They couldn't, they could only narrow it down to 500 people because... All, uh, the, again, either there's multiple fingerprints or no fingerprints. There's no DNA on the fucking baggie that you can get. That's a great question. You know, they spent 11 days. And also, it doesn't kick into, uh, it. it's, uh, you know, criminal possession, not on the scale of a, you know, it was not an attempt on the president's life, which would kick in a bunch of other stuff. It's to try to figure out who left an illegal substance in the White House. But I'm going to go with Kevin McCarthy. He was just over there. They've been spending over five years investigating the Bidens for all their money laundering, all their racketeering, all their... Five years? Why did that start in the middle of... Why did it start when Trump was president? That's odd. Tax evasion, and according to uh, U.S. Attorney Weiss, they're still investigating uh, the, the president and his son for bribery and for potential wrongdoing. So it makes... You are. What do you mean they? What the fuck are you talking about? They makes no sense. You know, the Secret Service hadn't really <laughs> received a black eye like the Department of Justice or the FBI. But unfortunately, today, uh, this is another name on the list of agencies that have run amok. Uh, yeah. So 
So Comer's saying that the Secret Service is just throwing the investigation. They're not being honest about what information that they do have. And of course, uh, it's probably, honest to God, it probably belonged to them at this point, right? They're probably selling it. They probably, the Secret Service is probably selling cocaine to people who visit the White House. It's, that's, what the, that's, that's the argument now, right? Again, either they're not being truthful with the House Oversight Committee or they're incompetent by not being able to determine who left this substance. It's hard for me to believe in reality that uh, our technology at the FBI couldn't identify some DNA on this bag of cocaine. Where the fuck do you think they were carrying it, stupid? Well, if they had not been politicized, I might have confidence in them telling us the truth. You uh, have made a lot of progress in your investigation into the Biden family. Mm, no. No you, no, you haven't. And the foreign business dealings of the Biden family. You have a very important hearing. Yeah, you, you've been great at getting to the bottom of the business dealings that they filed uh, corporate papers on. Hearing next Wednesday. Uh, why is that hearing going to be different? I understand that we might. <laughs> yeah, why is it going to be different? Finally, here comes some real stuff. Agent X. I'd be hearing a lot of new information. Yes, new, no, not that old stuff. Uh, Sean, I, I, um, I'm sorry, buddy. Uh, you're going to be disappointed. Um, we already, he's already told us. It's, uh, thir it's the people he's bringing in only know a third of what he already has talked about. So and we've been sitting on some new bank records. Uh, obviously, it's very encouraging to read the transcript that the Ways and Committees uh, had with the transcribed the interview with committee. the two mm -hmm. Irish whistleblowers because they actually knew a lot about many of these shell companies, and I think they were on the right track until they were told to stand down. So the American people are going to get to watch live both whistleblowers, including uh, Whistleblower X, who's never revealed his identity. Gay Democrat, Whistleblower X, the worst kind, IRS, gay and a Democrat, I can't decide which one's worth. It was normally all three of those would be a red flag, but since they're on our side, we like them. He will do that the day of our hearing, and everyone can see, hopefully Fox will be covering that, Sean. And we have specific. Mm. They'll, they'll watch C-SPAN and grab clips. Substantive questions about many of these wires, about mm. many of these shell companies, about potential money laundering, about potential racketeering. Potential. Potential is a big word. I mean, it's been, it's been years. You're still with potential. All right. And I believe that these two witnesses are going to be able to answer those questions. So many. You don't know? You've, you've read their transcripts and you don't know. You're going to ask them questions in, live in a committee hearing that you don't know the answer. They're your witnesses and you're going to ask them questions and they're going to be cross-examined. You're going to ask them questions that you don't know whether they're going to be, whether their answers are true or correct. Anytime, Sean, you have these congressional hearings and uh, you know they're all they're all hat and no cattle. You don't really learn anything new, and they're not. Yeah. Well, don't don't toot your own horn. Not substantive. This should be a very substantive, informative. I agree. It should. It's not going to be. But it should. Uh, hearing for the American people, and this is going to be the first time the American people actually hear credible witnesses. Really? So so you're admitting that your witnesses so far not credible. Okay. Cool. Say under oath exactly what crimes have been committed Congress by the family. Biden family. Okay, this is it. Well, that's it. I mean, I'm sold. I'll be there. I'll be there. Come on now. Bring it. We're going to, under oath, they're going to tell us the crimes. Sean, this is, you know, he's been playing footsie, Sean, but he's ready to fuck. This is time. This is the big one. Do you have standing to go before the judge? They, they have this plea deal. No jail time for Hunter. Um, do you have no standing to no. go to this judge no. and request that, no. that this deal not be, no, not be agreed to by the judge because of new information and new, no. new evidence has, has been forthcoming? We have to go through the Department of Justice, unfortunately, for things like granting immunity no. and, and th yeah, right.
Why did they? Why does he even have a show? Why don't I just ask me the questions? Shit. No. Long story short. All right. Let me ask you this. When, when we got, can you kick my ass? Got these WhatsApp messages. I'm sitting here with Alleged. my father. We would like to understand why the why metadata didn't happen. Why the committed um, uh, the commitment has not been fulfilled. Uh, tell the director. Yeah. Again, who's who is who's blackmailing who in this situation? I, this sounds backwards. I have to say, like I I honestly think that if this WhatsApp message was supposedly the Zhang name was switched to Biden and the the other guy was saying all this stuff to Hunter Biden and said, I don't care if your old man's sitting right next to you. I'm going to bring to bear on the two of you. What the fuck? Blah, blah. That would sound more sketchy than him trying to start a business deal and going, wait a minute, this fucking stuff's falling through. Fuck you. We'd like to resolve it now before it gets out of hand and now means tonight. And Z, if I get a call or a text from anyone involved in this other than you, Zhang, or the chairman... I will make certain that the that between the man sitting next to me, his father Joe, and every person he knows, and my ability to forever hold a grudge, that you will re regret not following my direction. Yeah, I, I gotta say, that doesn't sound like somebody over a barrel. I, I, I have to say it like that. Of all the stuff that's come out, that is, first of all, it's bullshit. But let's just uh, start right there. But it sounds a, it's like concocted and shifted around, but I don't get how that proves the conspiracy they think it proves. It sounds like just the opposite. I'm sitting here waiting for the call with my father. Okay. Yeah, when, what, what year was that? Was Joe Biden vice president then? Was he a senator? Was he on the House Ways and Means Committee? Was he on the was he on the Security Committee in the Senate or something? For, Senate Foreign Relations. Was he on Senate Foreign Relations? No, no, he was a what? He was a he was a private citizen when that shit supposedly happened. And then what? Joe Biden. He's implicated his father again. He's been implicated his, on many times. My question. Yes, on many times. Question to you is simple. That's uh, that to me sounds like a shakedown. That's because you're stupid. It sounds like the opposite of a shakedown. Uh, well, I guess it's, it sounds like a shakedown, but in the wrong direction for which way the money is flowing. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that to me sounds like Joe Biden full involvement and one week. No, it doesn't. It's a text. If he's on the phone, if it's a recording, dad, I'm on the phone. I'm sorry. I'm having ice cream. All right. Listen, God damn it. Less than a week after that exchange. Didn't the Biden family get $5 million transferred to them from that energy company in China? Yes. And remember, that energy company... Yeah, 10% for the big guy was all 10%, which was the holding fee to open the Louisiana natural gas thing that didn't come through. And then they got the, sorry, you wasted your time money. It's the same energy company that was paying Gal Luft, and the Department of Justice indicted Gal Luft on being an unregistered foreign agent. Right, but he was actually an employee, and he also ghost wrote an article for China Daily in the voice of James Woolsey. Please forward any ghost written articles that Hunter Biden wrote uh, that were favorable to the Chinese government when he was transit when he was part of uh, Donald Trump's transition team. I'll wait. Yet Hunter Biden received about twenty five times more money from that same Chinese energy company, and they let him walk free. So uh, we're in a- mm, No, 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 they, they started a business with him. Other people got parts of it as well, but the idea, it also got spent on office space and all kinds of shit. In addition to having the uh, committee hearing with the Irish whistleblowers, where we're gonna be able to have, ask very substantive tax questions. Uh-huh, yeah. oh God, sorry, I started to chub a little bit. Every time he says very substantive tax questions, I get, ah, my nipples get so hard, I can't, but I could cut my way out of a submarine. We're also going to be uh, having depositions and transcribed interviews where we can ask people exactly what Joe Biden knew and when he knew it. So I think next week. Yeah, you think so? You're going to have those? When, you, when are those happening? Week has the potential to. What, uh, here's, here's what I would tell you what. When you have those answers and those answers have been verified, you let us know. And until then, I would uh, I go vote for the I, wh whatever spending bills in front of you.
be a very, uh, in, uh, very productive week with respect to our investigation. Mm. And I think it's going to be, uh, uh, there will be a lot of questions that Joe Biden's going to have to answer. And I don't know how much longer the mainstream media can turn a blind eye to this because the evidence is overwhelming. Well, if the evidence was overwhelming, they wouldn't be able to. But so far, bupkis. I, like, this is getting tedious. That many crimes were committed. Like what? They rattled them off. And obviously, Joe Biden had to be front and center in this. Okay, if, first of all, if Joe Biden isn't front and center, they aren't crimes. <laughs> because you have correspondence where allegedly... Hunter Biden is saying, I don't want to work for a foreign company. I don't want to register uh, under FARA. That's not going to happen. You guys have to set up a subsidiary here under U.S. law. And then they don't do it. And he goes, fuck you. What the fuck are you doing? This fucking waste of my time. Give me my fucking money, you fucking fuck. <laughs> Which is kind of how you would act, isn't it? Chairman Comer, thank you as always. We appreciate Thank you for wasting our time, Chairman Comer. We're, we're so excited for you to come by and tell us what's so going to happen like you've said so many times before, it's, it's so, so far, I've learned so much. I, uh, I, I have to say, I, um, it's not often that James Comer gets to be on my show and uh, um, be less full of, sh be more full of shit than Jim Caviezel. But I mean, it takes, that takes work. That takes a lot of fucking work. He's the new Mike Lindell. No question. Um, oh, God. It's just uh, like, again, on and fucking on and fucking on. And again, the CEFC deal did not happen because, and, and I want to find, it drives me a little bit crazy. Like, da, 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 da. Where's the actual, um, let's see. Da, 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 da. D crash. Reason for the rest unclear. That's ye when he goes down. Do, ba, do, do. Um, Also, I, um, I, I have to say, if, have you ever heard, have you ever heard of the mob when a mob deal goes wrong? When there's, when you ever heard of international criminals engaging in money laundering, threatened to sue? I'm serious. Chat room. I, let me, let me know. Because I, I, that, that part sticks out to me. That's, I mean, parts of this shit, oof, parts of this shit hangs with me. And it is really hard to like, you know, like my adrenochrome questions. They just hang there in the air. And one of them is, is I have never, I have never seen a situation where, where a bag man threatens to sue his boss or a, a, a like, a black male victim threatens to sue the person that they're that they're that's blackmailing them for not paying them money. It's a stupid. It's it's fucking dumb. It's a like the concept is stupid. I have never. I'm never. I swear. I swear. I've never. It makes no sense. It is absolute nonsense. Who the fuck ever? tries to sue or threatens to sue their blackmailer, their controller, the person they're the bag man for, for the person that they are willfully engaging in a criminal enterprise. Who ever, ever, anybody, has anybody ever heard that shit? It makes no sense. It's, it, all right. <laughs> At the tail end of this CEFC deal, right as it was collapsing, Hunter Biden threatened to sue both Yan and Dong, who were balking at paying, claiming they had no right to question his expenses, explaining the House of Sweden was his D.C. base office. I will bring suit in the Chancery Court of Delaware, which, as you know, is my home state, and I have privilege to have worked with and know every judge in the Chancery Court. Um, and they said, you cannot sue us for paying incorrect expenses. Did, what the fuck kind of mafia movie? <laughs> what? This is the worst, mo most boring mafia movie ever. I swear, it's it's like... It's like they made the untouchables with none of the gunfights. That is, I mean, 
you, you guys know I have like these hanging questions. And that's the new one. That is it. That's the one. Why did Hunter Biden threaten to sue the people from CEFC that were dicking him around on this deal, apparently leading him on to try and engage in this longer scheme? And as it started to break down, he was like, wait a minute, wait a fucking second. All right, you assholes, give me my money. I'm getting out of here. Why would he threaten to sue them if he was engaged in a criminal activity? Like, honest to God, like, I don't care how fucked up Delaware, is. like the idea that it's Delaware is like New Jersey during prohibition or something is just dumb. Does the Pac-Man have Venmo? I, I don't, I, Ma, do we have any maggots in the audience that are, can explain this to me? Don't you, don't Bagman and, and mafia people and international criminals like snuff people or push them out of fucking windows or off of yachts and shit like that? This shit? Explain that to me. Anybody? Because anybody, I, because I'm, I'm completely confused. That, that part is, is going to be like, if Hunter Biden was engaged in criminal activity with CEFC, why did he threaten to sue them? Nobody is that bad a, a, a criminal. No one. Especially somebody who knows drug dealers. I don't, and nobody's that cracked out. Uh, it, it's going to go, that's going to follow. Okay. If Hunter Biden was engaged in a criminal activity that involved his father, that was part of a giant spider web, why did he threaten to sue in an American court? What the hell are you talking about? Yeah, you don't sue your bag, man. You push him out a window. What are you talking? It makes no sense. This goes right up there with, you know, if adrenochrome keeps you young, why does Bill Gates look like shit? <laughs> I don't. I just, oh God, I have radio in the morning and I'm, I'm going to be, I'm not going to get any sleep. I'm going to lay in bed, staring at the fucking ceiling going, what, how, who sues the Godfather? What are you talking? Who, what would the Godfather have been like if, if, if he's like, I knew it was you and you've been served here, you know, hmm, you need a square head to understand. I, I. Okay, I've got a brain cramp from this. That's all there is to it. <laughs> I'm literally trying to figure this out, like how that works. I don't, there's no way to, it like, and I have, well, hold on a second. Let me go back to here. Um, if I may, I, I just don't think I'm, where's this guy? Oh, there you go. And let's check something here real quick. There's a, no, this one right here. Um, I think we have to ask somebody who might have some better idea, who can think about this stuff. Hey, man, I got an idea or two. Let me tell you something, okay? Simmer down. Settle in, everybody. I think I got this figured out. Now, normally in a criminal enterprise, uh, let's just say for the sake of argument, uh, you... You've got uh, a, a tiny waist and you need some cigarettes and you're in the cell block and, uh, and your personal uh, boundary standards have dropped to an all-time low. And all you need is a, uh, some cigarettes and a couple of straws from the lunchroom to make yourself a makeshift spoon so you can get the living shit out of there, right? So you might engage in some kind of a trade. You go, okay, I got my escape plan. I got my, I got my, sh my sh shiv spoon. It's a sort of a spork, actually. I made a spork so I could use it at the lunch table and to dig myself free. Kind of uh, Papillon meets KFC. And so I got that. I got a couple of cigarettes. And what I do is, what I'm going to do is I set up a rather elaborate pumping scheme where I make a dummy out of myself and I put the cigarette in the dummy's mouth. And, and then as I step, my shoe has a tube in it that runs all the way back to my cell that makes a puffin. 
and it'll draw in some of that cigarette and puff it right there. So it looks like it buys me a little time. I understand? So, I mean, in that situation, where everything's got to be firing on all cylinders, you got your plan, you're ready to Shawshank the shit out of there, right? You ain't going to go, hey, man, I said three cigarettes, A's only two. You got your plan, you built your dummy, you got your foot pump, you got your cigarette. For the, what if I need another? And then you're like, I'm taking you to court, thereby revealing the existence of my dummy, my my travel spork, my Shawshank plan, and uh, and my bus ticket that I've saved up for, which I will require to get a county away. It don't make no sense. It don't make no... Let me, let me tell you another one. And don't ask me how I know this, but let's just say you smuggle in a bag of meth in your drawers and... Uh, you forget that there's a law in the county about drinking an open bottle of liquor while staggering in the middle of the street. It's a mistake anybody can make. Okay. <laughs> Happened to anybody. And you stumble it down. And they, I didn't even know they could pull you over if you wasn't in a car. But uh, I guess it has more to do with the street legally, if you think about it. And uh, so they pull you over. And you're like, hey, pull over. And like, pull over. I am over. I'm on my feet. Like, just barely. I'm like, hey, fuck you. Anyways, like, what you got in the bottle? I'm like, what does it look like? It says whiskey on it. Uh, and like, yeah, but we got to make sure. And I'm like, wait a minute. It's brown liquid, but legally you can't assume it's whiskey. It says it on the bottle, but that could be false advertising. That's free speech, man. Maybe I'm I'm like Michael Anthony, the bass player from uh, Van Halen. I'm hiding my iced tea in a whiskey bottle just to look tough. You don't know. You don't fucking know. Guzzle, 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 burp. And then uh, I'm going to pass a blood alcohol test right, <laughs> right away because this shit's going to take a couple minutes to get into my system. So anyway, they, they go, all right, that's bullshit. Get up against the car. And they patting you down. They go, when would you get a, a what, what's that, a third ball or a prolapsed anus? And you're like, both. And then they're like, what's this? And you're like, that's my giant bag of meth. Um, you don't turn around and then go, you, what you do is you, you inform on who sold you the meth. You don't threaten to sue them because don't ask me how I know this, but apparently they don't recognize that you have standing in court. Yeah. And I was like, look, your honor, I was barely standing, but he sold me a bag of meth. That was, uh, it, he had told me under the false pretense that it would be shaped vaguely like my genitalia and it was crusty and bumpy. And, and I was like, okay, that's about right. And, but, but so much so the officer noticed or whatever. And so it's on him that I got arrested. This is an unlawful search and seizure by ricochet. I would like to sue him for my incarceration. That don't work. Okay, don't like that one? Let me fill you in on another one. And this will be our last one for that. I want you to figure it out. S explain to me, all right? Explain to me. You happen to be walking by a window late at night carrying a rather large camera with a telephoto lens that you had happened upon in a car with a busted window. How the window got busted, nobody knows at this point. Not germane to the story. But you walking around with it and you trying it out and you're like, don't even know if it got camera in it. And you happen to stumble by a window and inside there, the mayor is on top of his secretary's second cousin, which I believe is his mom's uncle's friend, twice removed, pumping and sweating. And you're like, I'm fairly certain they ain't married, although God knows. And so... You just kazoo, 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 kazoo. You just fire away, kazoo, kazoo, kazoo. And then you go over to Gary's because he's got a dark room. It's not one of them developing rooms, just one of his houses. He, he didn't pay the light bill. So he's got a dark room in there. And you fiddle around a little bit. And you make some of them pictures come out. And then you put them in one of them brown envelopes. Looks all fucking sketchy like in a spy movie. And then you saunter up to the mayor and, and go, uh, I'll have you know. I have in this very envelope naked nudie pictures of you on top of your assistant's brother's cousin's second husband twice removed pumping and sweating 
And if you don't pay me $75.39 and a handful of stamps, I am going to give these to the local newspaper for, for $20. That's how much they offered me when they saw them. And, and, and they go, are those the only copies? And because I'm a decent businessman, I go, well, yes. I'm not going to sell you a copy. These are the only copies they are. Otherwise, they ain't worth $75.39. I'm just saying. Yeah. So he goes, let me see him. And you hand him over. And then he's got him in his hand. And he runs and gets in his car and drives off and, and, and tears him up. You can see him tearing him up and laughing as he drives down the street. And you're like, hey, these are the only copies. And I ate the negatives just for safety. Now, your next step in this equation, do you file in the local civil court for a civil judgment of $73.35 for uh, destruction of your personal property? Will that work? You follow me? You follow me? How, what do you say? How wrote this bit? Bullshit, this is a true story. I mean, it happened to a friend of mine. I don't know what you fucking talk about. T don't tell nobody nothing. Look, <clears throat> hey, forget what I said.